The manned spaceflight engineer program was an effort by the United States Air Force to train American military personnel as payload specialists for United States Department of Defense missions on the Space Shuttle program. Background The United States Air Force USAF and the National Reconnaissance Office NRO of the United States Department of Defense DOD participated in the development of the Space Shuttle from its official inception in 1969. To save money, the shuttle was intended to serve as the United States National Launch System for all civilian, military, and classified payloads. The DOD influenced key aspects of the shuttle's design such as the size of its cargo bay, and Congress reportedly told DOD that it would not pay for satellites not designed to fit into the bay. The USAF in the 1970s hoped to buy up to three shuttles and fly them with all military crews. As with the earlier X-20 Dinosaur and Manned Orbiting Laboratory, budget concerns ended the Blue Shuttle program, but the USAF gained the use of up to one-third of all launches and the right to requisition the next available launch for high-priority payloads. It renovated an existing launch site at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California to send shuttles into polar orbits and established the Manned Spaceflight Control Squadron. Its personnel monitored military shuttle flights from a secret floor of NASA's Mission Control Center in Houston, ahead of a planned DOD Mission Control Center in Colorado that would monitor an expected 12 to 14 flights each year. MSC <laughs> 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 Many active duty USAF and other American military personnel have served about 60% of the total in 1985, and continue to serve, as NASA astronauts. Although with the end of, "...Blue Shuttle", DOD no longer needed its own shuttle pilots and mission specialists, it still desired military payload specialists for classified payloads on the about 100 or more shuttle flights it expected to use. While NASA offered to train the DOD astronauts the military wanted to control their training, as DOD astronauts who went to NASA rarely returned. In 1979, the first 13 man spaceflight engineers MSEs were selected, chosen from all services and based at Los Angeles Air Force Base. Frank J. Casarino, Jeffrey E. Detroit, Michael A. Hamill, Terry A. Higby, Darrell J. Joseph. Malcolm W. Lydon Gary E. Payton flew on STS 51C, 1985. Jerry J. R. I. J. Paul A. Sefcek Eric E. Sundberg David M. Vidrine, USN John Brett Watterson Keith C. Wright in 1982, another 14 were selected, chosen only from the USAF James B. Armour, Jr. Michael W. Bowen, Livingston L. Holder, Jr., Larry D. James, Charles E. Jones, Maureen C. Lacombe, Michael R. Mance, Randy T. Odell, William A. Pales, flew on STS 51J, 1985, Craig A. Puz, Catherine E. Sparks Roberts, Jess M. Sponable, William D. Thompson Glenn S. Yaklin 1985, five more were selected Joseph J. Coretto Robert B. Crombie Frank M. Dermond David P. Stabe, Jr. Teresa M. Stevenson 1991, Chief Warrant Officer Thomas J. Hennan, United States Army flew aboard STS-44 as the first military payload specialist since Peyton and Pales, and the first enlisted soldier in space. He was not among the 32 MSEs selected during the program's existence, but assigned to the U.S. Army Intelligence Center at F.T. Huachuca, Arizona. Secrecy As a civilian agency, NASA typically freely provides details on all aspects of its operations. The Dodge Shuttle missions required different procedures to maintain secrecy of the classified payloads. The government viewed the flights and their payloads as secret as troop movements, asked media organizations to avoid reporting details, and threatened to investigate even speculation as potential leaks of classified information. 
The military did not disclose Musa's names at first, unlike those chosen for dinosaur and mole. The press nonetheless reported in great detail on likely military payloads using open source intelligence, such as the direction of the shuttle after liftoff. Unlike all other flights, NASA only began public countdowns a few minutes before launch, did not distribute press kits, and did not permit reporters to attend countdowns or listen to shuttle to ground communications. A secret USAFNRO Mission Control Center in Sunnyvale, California monitored flights alongside Houston Mission Control. NASA announced civilian shuttle mission schedules and flight routes in advance, hundreds of civilians attended most landings, and loudspeakers played radio transmissions. Only a few reporters and NASA employees, by contrast, attended the classified flight's silent landings. Difficulties <laughs> 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 The MSE program faced internal and external challenges. NASA, which early on had a «sour» relationship with the MSEs, was reluctant to assign them to its flights given their lack of NASA training and the need for spots for other payload specialists. Internal USAF debates on the usefulness of manned spaceflight to the DOD caused uncertainty for MSE personnel. New regulations in 1984 that strongly encouraged USAF personnel to move to another assignment after four years caused many early MSEs to transfer out of the program, with only nine active by late 1985. Topic <laughs> End. The DOD stated in December 1984 that it planned to use about 20% of the 70 shuttle flights NASA planned over the following five years, with almost all military-related launches moving to the shuttle from unmanned rockets. Before the loss of Challenger in January 1986, however, ongoing launch delays caused DOD to express concern about overdependence on the shuttle. Despite congressional and NASA opposition, in 1984 Dodd began procuring a new unmanned rocket capable of launching shuttle-sized payloads into geosynchronous orbit. In 1985 it won approval to buy ten such rockets, which became the Titan IV. Challenger accelerated these plans but several NRO payloads only the shuttle could launch were grounded until it flew again, a dilemma NRO had feared as early as the mid-1970s, with Dodd's return to unmanned rockets and less need for dedicated military astronauts, the MSE program ended in 1988 with only two MSEs having flown into space. The Houston Squadron was dissolved, construction of the Colorado Center ended, and the Vandenberg launch site used for unmanned rockets. Only active duty military NASA astronauts flew on subsequent missions with Dodd payloads, the only exceptions being former Marine Story Musgrave and former Dodd scientist Catherine C. Thornton on STS 33. <laughs> <laughs> Shuttle missions with classified payloads In 1993, a high ranking intelligence official awarded all crew members of the classified shuttle flights with the National Intelligence Medal of Achievement. The astronauts were permitted to wear the medals in public and discuss details of their flights that appeared on the medals' citations. STS-4, 1982 non-DOD flight with classified DOD payload STS-51C, 1985 first all-DOD flight, beginning of secrecy STS-51J, 1985 STS-27, 1988 STS-28, 1989 STS-33, 1989 STS-36, 1990 STS-38, 1990 STS-39, 1991 First unclassified DOD flight, only one payload was classified STS-44, 1991 the payload was unclassified before launch STS-53, 1992